Mental health. That's the topic of today. We are chatting about the challenges, the stigma, and the solutions around mental health because it's a really big topic. And because when I asked you, my amazing community, what you wanted to talk about, one of the professionals who have been on this call long before I started doing it on YouTube Live reached out and said, I want to know how to talk to kids about mental health. There is so much stigma. There is so much confusion. There is so much stopping us from talking about it. How do we make sure that they get the help they need? And I thought, great topic. Let's talk about it. But before, before we talk about mental health, we're going to do a mental health practice. We're just going to do some simple, easy, gentle stretching. Yes? This will help your mental health because if you, like me, have been sitting at your computer all day, I do sessions with families virtually, and so that's what I've been doing this morning, I haven't gotten up and moved my body much at all. So you might be in that same boat, or you've moved it and you're with your kids and you're sitting on all these weird contorted positions, so this will help you. The first thing we're going to do is just open your arms really wide, and we're going to arch our back open, and then we're going to come forward one. And then two, we're going to do it five times. Put the other hand on top. And then three. Make sure you're not hitting the things around you, or if you are, be gentle with them. Four. And five. Reach out really big and wide. Stretch that back. Give yourself a hug. Okay. That's it. We're going to do one more thing as our mental health practice today. And that's we're going to do head circles. So we're just going to roll around and around. We hold so much tension to in our neck and our shoulders that sometimes just moving our body three can really help so much. Four. Again, we're only doing five. And five. Now, if you want extra credit, you can roll your head the other way. But we're going to dive in. So first of all, do you realize that what we just did exercising, stretching, moving our body is a mental health practice. I think for so many of us, that connection has not been solidified and made, but it is true. One of the biggest things that we can do to take care of our mental well-being is to take care of our physical well-being. So all those times you went for a walk, you were taking care of your mental health. Look at you doing better than you thought. Don't you just love that? Every time you go to the gym, every time you move your body, You are doing something good, not only for your physical health, but also your mental health. There are lots of things like that that we just don't know because we don't talk about it. So if you are watching either live or the replay, what is one thing that you can think of that you do on a regular basis that might actually be a really good mental health practice? Maybe that's going for a walk. Maybe that's eating healthy food. Maybe that's drinking water or getting enough sleep. Yes, sleep is one of the major indicators of your mental health. Are you talking to people you love and care about? What is something you do that you consider a mental health practice that you do without thinking about it as a mental health practice? Because sometimes we think of the things we do for our mental health is therapy and that's it. And if you need that kind of help, something is wrong. Well, let's cut that out right here and right now. The stigma of therapy is part of what I want to talk about. Why is it bad to ask for help, especially help around something we've never been taught? We've never been taught about our mental health in school. In elementary school, most kids are taught about nutrition. What are good foods to eat? What are bad foods to eat? How does it affect our body? So they can make intentional choices. Most kids in elementary school have gym through high school every day. This is how you move your body. This is how you take care of yourself. This is how you play sports. This is how you lift safely. This is how you run take care of their physical body. But often our mental health is not directly addressed. It's not a class. It's not a structured subject. Some teachers are amazing at bringing this content in, or it's done as a supplemental conversation. But if we're never taught how to do it, how are we supposed to know how to take care of our mental health? One of the stigmas that happens is that we are taught or kind of through culture osmosis to believe that we should just know how to find our happiness and know how to deal with our feelings. We should just know how to navigate all of these big things that are happening for us. 
And that's simply not true. In the same way you just don't know how to do math, you don't just know how to read. You don't just know how to take care of your physical health. We don't know how to take care of our mental and emotional health. We need support for that. We, when we have an injury, when something gets hurt in our bodies, we go to the doctor and then they prescribe physical therapy or surgery or something to fix us or medication, something to help us. But yet when something's going on emotionally that is really hard, really big, somehow there's this stigma that we shouldn't ask for help. We should just know. But it's not so different from our physical health. So what are the stigmas? Sometimes it's that we should know. We should just know how to do this. And that's not true. Sometimes it's that you're weak if you need help. Sometimes it's that we shouldn't talk about emotions. We don't do that. We don't talk about that. I mean, we can add in the conversation about how we gender that as well. Another layer, right? Sometimes it's cultural. In our culture, we don't do that. That's something those people do. Why why should one group be able to ask for help and another shouldn't? Mental health is something that we all experience. Doing things to take care of ourselves is something that we all need. And therefore, we need to stop deciding that there's this line that we should not cross, that we shouldn't talk about. So let's talk about it, okay? Because that's what we do with hard subjects. We bring them to light. We have the conversation. We discuss it because that's how we grow. And we can only grow if we're willing to talk about it. So I like to think about how to talk to your kids about mental health in three chunks. The first chunk is for yourself. What do you think? What do you feel? What is your truth? Not from what everything else around you has said, but what do you believe? I believe that asking for help around my mental health makes me a better person. I believe that I don't know everything. And so, of course, of course, there are going to be moments where I need support. I believe that I am willing to go and learn to be better in my profession. I'm willing to go and learn to take care of my body physically better. I'm willing to go and learn how to draw better. I'm willing to go and learn. I actually just started swing dance classes, so I'm learning to swing dance. Why wouldn't I ask for someone to help me how to feel my feelings better? I have really big feelings. And how to navigate that better, I'm willing to do that. That's what I believe. I believe that this is an important part of my life that I'm willing to invest in. In my time, in my finances, in my energy. Because if I don't, the breakdown that comes from that costs me so much more. That's what I believe. So I just want you to take a moment and think about what do you believe? Because if we're going to think about teaching our kids or changing a community view, we need to know what we think first. So decide what you think. Now, second layer. What do you want to teach your family? And if you are professional working with kids, what do you want to teach the group of children that are entrusted to you? That's your family. And that family might just last a year or a a therapy rotation, but they are are your family. So what do you want to teach those kids? What do you want to share with them about their mental health, the concept of mental health, the concept of well-being, the concept of self-care, which I've started to think about as action-based mental health, because sometimes we've decided self-care is selfish. So what if we just think about that as a way to take care of our mental health? What do you want to teach them? I want to teach them that just like they learn to read and write and ride a bike, they need to learn how to feel their feelings. I want them to learn that they're not doing it wrong when they have big feelings, but that there's a better way to express and communicate those feelings. I want them to learn that their feelings are never wrong never wrong. Sometimes what they do with them could be done better. Our actions can be problematic, but not our feelings. I also want them to learn that they can do hard things and feel hard things and be okay. I want my kids to learn that it's okay to be uncomfortable, that we're not always just striving for the the good feelings of happy and joy and enthusiasm and excitement, but that sometimes fear 
is a great feeling because it means you're about to do something big. Sometimes being scared is appropriate because it motivates you to get out of a situation. That confusion can be a door to learning. That anger can open into your passion. I want my kids, the kids entrusted to me, to learn that all of their feelings are important and valid and have space in their lives. I want them to learn that they can work through all of those feelings so they never try to avoid them. Well, let's face it. We all avoid our feelings sometimes, but not all the time because that's how they build resiliency. That's what I want. What do you want for your kids? What do you want that conversation to look like? If I know what I want to impart on the kids that are entrusted to me, whether those are my children, which you know I don't have my own children, but you might, or the children you work with, I have lots of those. If I know what I want them to know about feelings, then I can make sure that the ideas and concepts around mental health are being embedded in everyday conversations with them. Sometimes very specifically and overtly, but sometimes it's just the sense that they get from what's going on. So what do you want your kids to know? Third piece, final piece of it is, who do you wanna be in your community? How do you wanna have that conversation with more people? outside of just you and your family and your immediate nook? Do you want to be bold and brave and talk about mental health as being critical and important, even if that's not what everyone around you believes? Do you want to be specific about only sharing your really amazing views with certain people and not everybody? Do you want to be an observer and listen to what other people have to share more than sharing your own? All of these are great answers, but knowing where you want to fall in that equation, knowing what feels right for you, knowing what you believe a community, your culture should think about mental health, feel about mental health will help guide those decisions and guide the role you want to play in it. Clearly, you can guess my view on that is that I want us all to be talking about mental health and I am okay spearheading that conversation. Not everybody is, and that's okay. I think that understanding that even those people you look up to who seem like they have it all together sometimes have moments that they didn't, where they struggled. Mental health is not a sign of weakness. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to me. It's a sign of strength of knowing I need help and I know where to go get it. I know how to do this. And so I do a couple of things. One is for the past two years and throughout my life, I have gotten support around my mental health. But for the past two years, I've been working with an amazing therapist who has helped me in so many ways, not just with what I started with, which was I started with her because I was really feeling such a heavy sense of depression. Notice I didn't say I was depressed because That is not who I am, but that's what I was experiencing. And I needed help having more space to get out of bed and do what I love in the world because I wasn't feeling that. And she helped me with that. But it's been a long time since I have felt that way because I've had support and tools and strategies to navigate my feelings and confusion and uncertainty in the world. But she also helps me problem solve and think about the world and think about who I want to be in the world and what I want my life to look like and what I want my community to look like. And so therapy not only has gotten me out of my crisis, but it has helped me grow into the amazing person that I love being every day. And I am continuing to go to therapy so that I make sure that I keep growing. So I keep becoming that person. I think that one of the hangups is that With our mental health, we only address it when there is a problem. We only look at it and explore it when we're in breakdown. I'd love that to change because it's not just fixing the crisis. It's about a way of life of just like we have to eat healthy food every day in order to be healthy and hopefully not wait till we have a physical health crisis that causes us to change our eating, though sometimes we do. 
What if you took care of your mental health every single day rather than waiting for breakdown? Now, breakdown is going to happen even if you do that potentially because there are hard moments in life and it's not about pretending that's not there, but having the tools to get through life is. So this is how I want to be in community. This is how I want to be in the world. I want to talk loudly and bravely and boldly about mental health so that more people change their mind, let go of the stigma, are more willing to speak loudly. Who do you want to be? What would feel good to you? What do you want communities to talk about? What do you want communities to believe? So the final thing for me is just a little bit of how mental health works. There are all of these pieces that help us be strong and healthy. So maybe therapy isn't what you need to take care of your mental health right now, or isn't what you need to impart on your children or share. But there are things like our physical well-being. When we take care of our physical well-being, it helps our mental well-being. So can we do that? When we when we give ourselves space for our emotional, our emotions, our emotional well-being, that takes care of our mental health. Can you create space for your kids? Maybe there's a daily conversation or a weekly conversation. How are you feeling? What are you thinking about these days? If we give ourselves space as an adult, I journal to help with that. I meditate to help with that, to give myself space to feel my feelings. And then there's the community piece, the connection with other people, with things that are bigger than us. For some people, that's religion. For some people, that's nature. For some people, that's a cause in the world. For some people, it's all of it. But can you make sure that you have something bigger than you and that your children have something bigger than you and bigger than them? Because that helps give us meaning in life, which helps us with our mental health. There are so many ways that in our day to day life, we can just embed this simple stretching or talking to a friend. I have frequently at different moments in my life when I'm having a really bad day, I will text someone I care about and say, you are amazing. I am so grateful to have you in my life. Why do I do that when I'm feeling bad? Because spreading that glitter on them, giving them some sparkles lights me up because I then usually get a message back and going, oh, thanks, you made my day. Because we don't give enough compliments and hearing that I made somebody else's day helps shift my day. So sometimes the way out is through other people. There's so many ways. I could talk about this forever. But if you need tools, if you need help, if you need support, where do we get it? If we don't talk about mental health, we don't know where to find those tools. So I want to continue to be loud and bold and talk about it. Decide how you want to do that. But think about what you want for yourself, how you want to communicate that with the children entrusted in your life, and then how do you want this to be part of your community so that you can find the answer that is right for you. All right. Let me know one step that you are going to take today to support your mental health and to think about these concepts because I want to learn from what you are already doing. And I will see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time or on the replay with a new topic. So also, if you have topics that you want discussed on these weekly Wednesday wisdoms, let me know because I am all about answering your questions to help you be more engaged and amazing and fabulous and support the kids in your life. Have a wonderful, amazing, fantastic day.